All right, well, welcome to everyone for this third session of what to sing and chant while singing and chanting. This is the second part of Vespers. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to ask uh, Father John to start us with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. O heavenly King, comfort to the spirit of truth, who art in all places and fill us all things. Come and dwell in us, he cleanses us from every stain, and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father John. Uh, you'll notice this week we're in a little bit different uh, setting. Uh, you see Greg's face. Well, you will see Greg's face. Uh, Father John is actually uh, with us via telephone. Uh, so you may not be able to see his face directly, but you'll recognize his voice. I'm certain of that. Uh, so, um, and I'll... I, even if you don't see my face, but uh, I'm keeping my face with all uh, smiley and uh, just a, a very happy face. Just, just uh, so you can picture, you know, the face you have, you're looking at, the picture you're looking at, but just like with a happier face. <laughs> awesome, thank you, Father John. You. All right, so again, this is the, uh, the third session of what to sing and chant while singing and chanting. Um, we've had great response so far. Um, so um, we're really looking forward to this second session on Vespers. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn the floor over to Greg Abdullah. Hello. Hi. Thank you guys for being back. We'll, um, we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to get the slideshow started over here. And we're going to go through today um, the second part of Vespers. So last week we talked about uh, Vespers all the way up through um, Gladsome Light and including Gladsome Light. This week we're going to pick up with just after that. Um, with Father John being in through phone and, and Chris is going to be in and out a little bit. So we're going to um, don't forget to throw any questions you have into the chat section, but we're going to wait until the end of uh, the slideshow and then we'll floor all of the questions at uh, one time just so um, with the screen sharing on it's tough to monitor the chat and do that and it, I get very overwhelmed with technology. Um, don't tell anyone I said that. Uh, <laughs> so if it's okay with everyone we're just gonna hold hold your questions throw them into the chat as they come up and then once we um, finish, we will uh, come back and we'll answer all the questions at the end. Does that sound good, Abuna? Yes, yes, yes. So just to recap, we're talking about Vespers and the question could be asked, well, what is Vespers? Vespers, as we know, is the evening service that literally means evening, which takes place at evening or dusk. It Mainly its themes talk about and deal with creation and the glorification of God. It begins the new day liturgically. If you remember our um, chart from all the way back in the very first, first session, the liturgical year, we had the chart of all the different services. The day begins with Vespers liturgically. Mainly Vespers is coming to us from the monastic practice with elements being taken from the Orologian, Evcologian, Octoikos, Menaean, Triodian, or Pentecostarian. And this week, we'll be looking at Vespers for this coming Saturday night, which of course is the Vespers of Sunday morning, October 4th, uh, which will be in tone eight, primarily. And hey, there's your picture. And um, commemorating the Hieromartyr Eurotheos, oh, Bishop of Athens, the higher martyr Peter of Capitolia in Syria, the martyrs Domina, her daughters of Syria, and you can see all the rest um, in that heading. <laughs> After we have the entrance and everyone has processed into the uh, altar area, we begin with the evening prokimenon, with the deacon coming to the doors, the royal doors, lifting his orarion and saying, the evening prokimenon. And literally these words in Greek are, are just simply saying the evening prokimenon. They're called esperas prokimenon, which is evening and prokimenon. A prokimenon is coming to us from the Orologian, and it literally means before the reading. 
There's one for each day um, that we would have Vespers, and they're taken from the Psalms. Typically, they would be followed by Old Testament readings. In the early times, uh, early church, every Vespers service had Old Testament readings. Today, we really only see those Old Testament readings read at major feasts, um, the great feasts of Christ, the Feast of the Theotokos, and certain classes of saints as prescribed by the Typicon. The Prochimenon for Saturday evening is, as we all know, the Lord is King and hath clothed himself with majesty. And this hymn is kind of, there's a few different ways that you could um, say that, that the style of practice for how it's chanted would go. Would you like to say anything about that, Abuna? <laughs> we can't hear you at all, Father. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I wonder. Um, although I hear you very well from the phone, and I muted the com the computer. Anyway, uh, in the Byzantine tradition, so we don't lose any time or uh, I lose you. Um, in the Byzantine tradition, the, the, exactly how you see it on the screen, uh, you would chant the the uh, the Prokimenon once. And then there is a verse, and in this case we have the first verse as the Lord is robed, he is girded with strength. And then we chant again the Prokimenon. And then we do the second verse, for he has established the world so that it shall never be moved. Then we um, uh, chant the Prokimenon again for the third time with an ending. Okay? That's in the Byzantine tradition. Usually the verse is just intoned. So we do not chant it as if like a, the, the same way we sing or we chant the Prokimenon itself. And that's a way, that's why always verses in general are intoned, just so we can differentiate between, between what is as a verse and what's a, you know, what is a hymn. Um, <clears throat> so in the Byzantine, again, you'll sing it once. Verse, you repeat the refrain, which is the Prokimenon, the Lord is King. Then you do the second verse. And then the refrain with an ending. So technically, you would do the prokimenon three times. Uh, just on the side during uh, weekly vespers, you only have you only see one verse only on Saturday. For whatever reason, we have two verses on a regular uh, outside of um, Saturday, Monday, tu Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We only have one verse. And the way we do it, uh, with the prokimenon, which would be a different prokimenon, of course, a different um, uh, psalm verse, we would uh, actually do the verse twice in a row, and then the verse, and then the, the prokimenon for the third time with an ending. Okay? <clears throat> That's awesome. uh, um, uh, in general. Uh, the Russian tradition... You know, Greg can definitely talk more about it. And we do hear, we see here in the Narshadaisi sometimes some kind of a conflict between which way we should do the verse, you know, this way, I mean, the Prokimenon this way or that way. I would say just stick with one tradition in the end, not like one week like this and one day like this, you know. Uh, yeah. But I don't want to say, you know, I don't want people to say, well, if you do it Byzantine way, that means you're wrong, or if you're doing the Russian way, you know, it, you're wrong. It just, there are two established tradition of the way. And most likely, honestly, most likely the way the Russians do it is the older traditional way. And the Byzantines got to a point where they're like, you know, we wrote this thing, we wrote the rubrics for this, and we, well, actually, we're not going to go with, with what we have written, we, 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 and they changed it. Somehow we, they condense it to what we have now uh, in the Byzantine uh, the way we do it in the Byzantine uh, style. Okay? That's all I had to say about the Prokimena. It's awesome. <clears throat> Following the Prokimenon in a great Vespers scenario, you see a series of litanies and prayers. First, we see the litany of fervent supplication, which you might also see um, in some texts, um, the heading might say the augmented litany. And the, the major key that you see with this litany is that you start with, let us say, with our whole soul, with our whole mind, let us say, Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers. And then it switches into the have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy. We pray thee, hearken and have mercy. And we now have 
three Lord have mercies in response, which is why it's um, sometimes referred to okay. as augmented, but also sometimes why it's referred to as fervent, because if we have to respond with Lord have mercy three times, we really mean it. Um, uh, Greg? Follow? Yes. Greg, I'm so sorry. I, I just wanted, um, um, I forgot to mention something about the, you know, the actually the Old Testament readings. Uh, oh, that we yes. mentioned, uh, like exactly, and I'm, I'm sorry, I should have uh, told you this before. Um, you know, as you mentioned, uh, Greg, that uh, in the old days, most likely we always had, regardless, anytime you had a Vesper service, regardless if it's just a daily Vespers or whatever it is, um, there was some old, uh, like a, a reading from the Bible. Uh, and the reason I'm saying the reading from a Bible, not only the Old Testament, because in, if you notice, for feasts of um, uh, apostles, from, uh, for the feasts of the apostles, uh, like Apostle James or um, the yeah. evangelist uh, uh, Peter and Paul, you actually read from the New Testament and not from the Old Testament. And usually they're from uh, the Epistle of St. James or the Epistle of St. John, you know, one of, you know. So just wanted to make sure that not all the time, well, I mean, it's 99%, uh, or I would say 90% from the Old Testament, um, uh, but not uh, but not only from the not Old always. Testament, but also from the New Testament. And during Lent, actually, that's how we know how the daily, uh, our, uh, for there, there were Old Testament readings or some kind of a reading from the Bibles during um, every day, basically, is from uh, during Lent. If we, if you have a Vesper service every day um, uh, during Lent, you actually, there are uh, uh, designated readings from the Old Testament, usually Genesis and Proverbs, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. That's why in pre-sanctified, which is kind of like a Vesper service, you know, slash divine liturgy that's why you see these old testament readings that we read on wednesdays because we're so used to wednesday being the only time we do kind of the pre-sanctified the vesper service but if your parish is doing every night vespers which you can definitely do um you will see those everyday uh, um, um, uh, readings um but because it's lent we kind of like keep things yeah like we don't want to like uh, uh, chop off things out, you know? So it, like during Lang, we try to like keep everything how like used to be like for a longer time, you know, not like we now. Keep it or as to, complete like, as off. possible. What is it? We keep it as complete as possible. Yeah, you know? absolutely. That's definitely, you know, but outside land, usually we're like, nah, let's chop this off <laughs> and let's get rid of this. And we don't want to do this anymore. And we're going to, you know, but anyway, sorry, I just wanted to mention this and, <clears throat> no, it's beautiful. Following the litany of fervent supplication, we would move into what is called the evening prayer. Uh, you might see it, uh, you know, for those who know Greek as katexios on Kyrie. Um, for those of you that remember Bishop Antun, I was about 13 years old when I realized that the words all together were not part of this prayer. But the reason that whenever Bishop Antun was serving, was presiding from the throne, and, and would get to this prayer, he would always turn to everyone and he would say, all together. And then we would say the prayer together because when the bishop is presiding from the throne at Great Vespers, technically this prayer belongs to the bishop. And, and the bishop is the one who, who says that prayer, but he wanted everyone to, to pray together because for those of you that remember Bishop Antun, he loved people and wanted everyone to be together all the time as much as possible. Following the evening prayer, we see the litany of supplication, which you notice this one um, begins with, let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord, even though we've got about 15 to 20 more minutes. And then also has um, <laughs> grant this, O Lord, as the response uh, beginning about halfway through. Following this litany, we see the peace given and the prayer at the bowing of the heads. And then these, these, this whole section um, is coming to us from the Orologian and Evhologian, the, the priest parts coming from the Evhologian, the, the parts for the uh, choir, especially the prayers, uh, coming from the Orologian. Um, and it, during uh, daily Vespers, these, um, this whole section is reordered and everything gets kind of moved around. After the Prochimenon, you would go 
immediately into the evening prayer. The litany of fervent supplication gets moved until after the apostica and following the peace, then you would still go on as, as you would. But for great vespers on a Saturday night, this is what, or anytime you would celebrate great vespers, this is the order you would see it. Um, it was really funny. Um, when my dad became the Bishop of New England, we were at a parish life conference. And as is the tradition in the Antiochian Archdiocese, whenever there's a bishop on the throne, you are used to having, we, we typically do a great Vesper service. And it was his very first Vespers at the very first night of the parish life conference. And it came time for the um, uh, vouchsafe a Lord prayer. And so we all waited for him to start it. And he was looking in the book in daily Vespers and so he turned because he noticed that everyone was staring at him and he said, peace be to all. And in response, I was at the Chanter stand. I was replied with, um, and to thy spirit, vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this night without sin. And he said to me afterwards, I got lost because I, I didn't realize what was happening. And I said, well, when there's a bishop there, yeah, we usually do uh, great, great vespers. And his response was, I forgot there was a bishop there. So it's, it's just, you know, you might see things happening in different orders, depending on what service you're doing. But for great Vespers, always, this is this is the order that we see um, as is laid out in the service text week after week. Anything to add, Abuna? No, no, God bless you. I mean, uh, regular orthros, I mean, uh, daily orthros, the things, the, the order is a bit uh, different, uh, but we probably should say it at the end. We we'll probably like can talk, you know, if we have time or- Through uh, that a little more. Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch, you know, Vespers for lands, and I mean, we're, uh, the sky is the limit once we start talking about these things, you know, so, but we don't want to like hammer too, ma too much information at the same time, you know, so, um, but anyway, if we have time, we can mention it, like the difference between the Great Vespers and the Daily Vespers is not of a, of a, uh, a big uh, difference, a couple of things that they great. just, you know, they just like got swapped, if you were, in a way. But to talk more about like Lent and Vespers and stuff, that would require like a... a <laughs> That's a like, whole no. different chart that exactly. goes, gets thrown into things. Exactly. Uh, following the peace and the prayer at the bowing of the heads, we begin with the apostica. The apostica refer to psalm verses that are um, Sekira, those hymns that we looked at with Lord I Have Cried, similar to that, that have psalm verses interspersed. They have their own doxasticon and their theotokion. Sometimes, as you'll see for this coming Saturday, um, everything is in tone eight. So everything is coming from the octoipos. Mm -hmm. The saint of the day, Erotheos of Athos, is not a high enough rank where we sing anything at the apostica for, for, for him. And so the theotokion of the resurrection is the one used. It's not what we would call a split glory. There is only the glory both now and ever followed by the theotokian in tone eight mm -hmm. the hymns are a combination coming in the apostica are a combination of the orologian the octoikos the menean and the triodian or pentecostarian and as we talked about over the last couple of classes um, the typicon is the book that shows us how to put everything together but in this case for this saturday everything is coming basically from the octoikos the entire because thing. The entire thing of the apostica. And, um, you know, if you notice, those hymns that you're looking at, they are specifically for tone eight. Next week, when it's, or the following week, when it's tone one, it will be different hymns. And they will be like basically together. This is, you know, those, those hymns will be only for tone one, and then tone two, and tone three. Um, and then one thing like to notice about the apostica, um, I mean, between Vespers and Orthros, we have three places that we have verses that we chant between hymns, and it's after Lord I've Cried. We have, you know, the verses, that will watch, O Lord, and then we have verses, you know, uh, hymns to chant, and then we have the apostica, and then we have the praises after Orthros, praise ye God and his saints, praise him and his, his firm foundation. But if we notice just the apostica, for whatever reason, all the, the other two, the hymns after Lord I've Cried and the hymns uh, after the praises, after let every, everything that hath breath praise the Lord, they start actually with a verse, then the hymn. Except the apostica, for whatever reason, it will be good, you know, you know, 
I don't want to say like a whole research thing, but like it would be interesting to know why only the apostolic actually starts with an actual hymn and not a verse. And the verse, see how like the verse one on the screen is actually after the first, uh, you know, hymn. Not like usually like a verse and then a hymn, verse, then a hymn, verse, then a hymn. Um, it's just, uh, I, I don't, again, there are many things, you know, I wish we can know the reason. I'm some, we definitely, there is a reason. And I just need to, you know, investigate more. And there are some that we just like, that's how, we, you know, we receive them. At some point, somebody never wrote about it, why, you know, it was done this way and just became, that's the natural thing to do. Um, one thing to mention, um, you see here four hymns, but usually um, on, um, um, only on Saturday you see four. Usually you see three. And maybe that's why... Um, um, I mean, even when you have three, um, only two verses. With, you'll have two verses instead of three, right? Um, mm -hmm. Do we always yeah. on the verses and have music? Oh, uh, that's actually a question I can answer it now because I'm also I'm, uh, between Chris and I. We're looking at the uh, questions. The chat. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so do we always intone the verse? They have music in the links on the website. So what we're trying to do, uh, well, in general, as a rule, general rule, the verse should be intoned, like I said in the beginning, so we can, the person, uh, the hearer can differentiate between what is actually the actual hymn and what the procumen or the, the verse uh, is. So it will be a little bit um, uh, um, uh, like I can be kind of get lost if I start singing, let's say that this apostrophe has in tone eight, you know, so if I'm doing the verse one, uh, it will be kind of like, um, uh, um, I can get lost a little bit. And uh, if I start, or if I hear the chanter going, the Lord is king and hath clothed himself with majesty. The Lord is robed, he is girded with strength. Let us glorify. It, in a way, it's like in a way, I'm sounding like it sounds like it's all one one hymn. Um, so I don't, I couldn't like basically uh, differentiate between the verse and the hymn itself. So in general, the verse should be intoned something like this: "The Lord is King," or usually on the bass note or the dominant note of a you know the specific uh, whichever uh, tone. So the Lord is King and hath clothed Himself with Majesty. The Lord is robed; He is girded with strength. So you, if you notice, I kind of like intoned 90% of it to like kind of robed. And then the last few uh, uh, syllables, if I can say, uh, where you kind of sing them a little bit like more uh, embellished than the verse itself. Okay? So we do offer, um, we do offer uh, the music for the verse just like as, um, you know, here's, I usually would say on top of it fast or something that, to, to, to make sure people know it's not just like chanted, it's just kind of like a, the Lord is king and hath clothed himself with majesty, the Lord is robed, he is girded with strength. Let us, and then you take kind of a breath and then you start uh, singing. And then, for he has established the world so that it shall never be moved. And then you sing it. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, there's another question. Um, at a great Vespers that has everything from the Octoyukos with no glory in the, uh, should the etymologic apostolic and theistic be sung and similarly the Lord I have cried uh, Jesse it's a, a great question um, there is this uh, unwritten tradition if I can say um, without going to, uh, through a lot of details usually the this in this case that we have here in the Theotokion of the Resurrection in Tone 8 that we see on the screen usually the, if it if it's um, uh, only from the Octoyukos, this one for the Apostica is chanted in the Irmologic uh, style, but the the one for uh, Lord I Have Cried, uh, if it's uh, from the Octoyukos, or what's called the Dogmaticon, this unwritten tradition is to sing it in the uh, Sikhiratic style, more embellished. But in traditional classical uh, uh, Byzantine chant books, especially in Greek, you'll see all of these hymns, actually, of Lord I've Cried and the Apostica, include, including the glories of them, written in two styles, the, the etymologic style and the Sikhiratic style. Although, 
again, I don't want to go through a lot of details, but there's this unwritten tradition of like, if it's stone one, yeah, we do uh, the Lord of Pride uh, hymns in Sikhiratic style. Um, but the tone, tone two, same thing in, in Sikhiratic. Tone three, no, we do them in the Irmologic style. But traditionally, there are, you choose um, uh, uh, whichever style. But, you know, there's no rule more than there's just like unwritten tradition. That's how much, it, like it took, uh, kind of like it started, and just like some people follow it, some people don't. Okay. Awesome. I just that, that answers your question. And I just looked in the chat to go back to your question, Chris. I think, uh, Chris Palo, the evidence oh. seems to be um, that uh, vouchsafe, O Lord, predates the, the doxology. Oh, and that they, they that this prayer is um, one of the more older prayers, the same along the same lines as gladsome light. Like it, it was something that had um, grown within the tradition of the church, and then was uh, included in vespers as a result of that, and then was included in the um, great doxology when the great doxology uh, developed as as time went on, and in the, the smaller doxology. Um, I think there's there's uh, more to deal with that in um, evening worship um, by Uspensky if you're uh, looking to do more research on that that kind of topic. Um, anything else, Abuna, on the apostica? Um, no, actually. No. So following the apostica, we have the hymn of Saint Simeon, the God Receiver. Um, in the camp book, you'll see this music in a version that is written by Basil Kazan. In archdiocese conventions, you'll often see it sung in a um, Slavic practice style. Um, and in many places, you'll see it just read, especially when, um, depending on which bishop is, is presiding, you'll often see it read. The Byzantine practice is that this hymn is read typically by the celebrating priest or in his absence by the bishop on the throne, uh, if the bishop is present, the bishop on the throne. Slavic practice is that it's chanted uh, according to Slavic music. Antiochian practice is that we, we, we have a Byzantine version that really you'll only see existing in the Antiochian archdiocese, um, which is still fun. I mean, we use it all the time uh, at St. George in Phoenix when we're churching babies and doing these things uh, and the choir's not, not present like during this current period. Um, but most often, you know, you'll see whatever the practices of your parish is, is um, to maintain that consistency. Following St. Simeon's prayer, you'll have the Trisagian prayers, which are in so many ways, really the, the central prayer of the church. Like if we were to do the full, full um, services for Orthros and um, Great Vespers or Daily Vespers, you know, you see the Trisagian prayers multiple times throughout, you know, you see it during um, Compline services, you see it, it, it's everywhere because it becomes uh, really the central prayer of the church. Um, so we see it here at the end of Vespers. Anything to add, Abuna? No. You know, again, I always like, um, you know, I always like try to emphasize these things because one thing that like, I always felt like it is always a struggle that I had to always um, like face in a way. We always like people like will freak out if we read the the Saint Simeon prayer, or it will they will freak out if we chant it. You know, I've done in places. You know, I was expecting Greg to say what he told me when we were preparing for this. Uh, to also tell you that the, this hymn, the Lord now let us out that ser servant depart in peace, the Saint Simeon prayer, only chanted in the Byzantine style. Only you would ever hear it chanted in Byzantine style in the Antiochian Archdiocese uh, in North America. Uh, just, just uh, you know, Kazan wrote it because he, you know, and of course, uh, for for the right reason. Uh, but I don't want people. Um, like always to be adamant about one thing, you know, if you read it, you read, okay, you read it, fine, it's right. Somebody wants, you know, choir wants to sing it, 
So what? Let them, you know, let, you know, it's not, that's not about in the end when we pray and it's not about like, oh, should we, oh, now I'm going to be the Russian, you know, the defender of Russian tradition and, you know, or I'm going to be the defender of um, Byzantine tradition. If this will take you, you know, will decide on your salvation, please do so. Just ask your question. You know, one time a bishop, uh, just on the side, but just, it's important, like, for, we were at the seminary and, um, and a bishop uh, actually sneaked in the church without, uh, it was just a regular Vespers, um, and it was in the Christmas break, actually, so not a lot of people were there and, you know, barely anybody on campus. But he sneaked in, and then he sat in the, kind of like in the back, and the priest who was serving Vespers didn't know the bishop. So when, he, when we finished Vespers, I mean, the priest kind of freaked out, like, oh, your grace, you're here, you didn't tell me, I'm sorry, why, I mean, and the, the bishop looked at him, like, why, why, why are you apologizing, why, do, he's like, well, we should welcome you, and, we, and he's like, well, tell me something, if you welcome me or no, what is that going to help me with my salvation, or your salvation, you just, you, I walked in, you know, he walked in, and he wanted to listen to Vespers, so in the end of the day, the bishop decided he doesn't want to, be, you know, let's not take everything like, well, everything has to be by the book. You know, I come from a tradition, has to be, you know, um, chanted or read or what else, you know. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Gregor? I think it's great. Do you want to take the question about the, why do we say, Lord, Lord, now let us thou thy servant? We begin with more the Greek of the text of St. Luke, Despota, which is master, why do we use Lord? Um... Well, uh, maybe you think without a sister, but it sounds like I've always. Well, uh, Chris, I mean, that was a translation that it was done. God only, you know, I don't know. That, probably it's from the Nasser. I don't know, Greg, if that's. Uh, um, it's across the board. The Slavic practice in mm -hmm. English is to use Lord. The Greek practice in English is to use Lord. The, uh, you know, everyone uses that hymn as Lord. Lord, I don't know, you know, um, I know uh, now with um, trying to, at least in the Ethiopian Archdiocese and our Archdiocese, there is a kind of a movement to re-look at a lot of liturgical texts and try to um, uh, check the translation, because I'll be honest with you, um, a lot of, we find a lot of mistakes. Some mistakes that we can actually like, okay, that's fine, it's not a big deal, it's like this one. If we say Lord or if we say Masters, I mean, it's not like theologically a big problem in a way. Um, um, actually, the Arabic says, you know, Master. Yeah, Hannah answered this. We thank you, Hannah. Um, uh, but a lot of the hymns, actually all our hymns, 99% of the hymns were translated, what we have in English was translated from Arabic. And of course, Arabic was also the text in Arabic were translated from Greek. We don't have uh, basically back back when our you know master book came out and all these like liturgical books that actually came out uh, by looking uh, translating the original to English. It was a translation of a translation, and when you do that, uh, you have to expect a lot of mistakes. And some of the sentences, like, well, it just doesn't say that. It just Maybe in Arabic, there's way one way to interpret it, interpret it this way in English, but it just doesn't say that in the Greek, in the original. Um, so at some point, sometimes you'll see, or I mean, you've seen before, um, some things that came out from the Archdiocese saying, we're going to do this text now, you know, instead of this, right. this text, or this translation now. And not because, you know, people complain like, oh, we've been doing this for 50 years, why now? Like, okay, I mean, it just... We realized like there were some mistakes were done or something that we can do better. Why not? You know, it just, you know, okay. Some things we bite on on a wood, as we say in Arabic, and we say, okay, you know what? They're so embedded in people and not theologically, they're not theologically wrong, um, but we need to fix them. You know, what if we don't find? But it doesn't mean if somebody chants like the the apolitikon of, of the cross. You know, if somebody says, and by, you know, and by thy cross, preserve thy commonwealth, and people freak out, like, where's the word power? Where's the word power? It should be by the power of your cross, you know. And I was like, one time, like, well, it doesn't say in the Greek power of the cross. It says by the cross. What's wrong if I say by the cross? You know, if somebody says by the cross, you know, um, it's not a big deal, you know. But we do have also, we've, we've found before mistakes, uh, major mistakes, like theologically are wrong, um, 
uh, that really need to be fixed. And some, some of the things you actually don't even notice, that's the thing. You know, a lot of people don't notice because they don't do these services regularly. But yeah. if we touch the honorable than the cherubim or if we touch the resurrection of Apolitikia, people are like, <gasps> what are you, are you doing with these? Because we're so, you know, used to them. But I'd be very honest with you, we've already changed, uh, changed a lot of the stuff that just yeah. people don't even know the difference just because they're not used to that, you know. And they, you know, come out once a year or twice a year or in services are not very common, commonly done in parishes, you know. The other thing about language to keep in mind, it's very easy now to look at, this is what the Greek says, and so this is how I would translate it now. But we always have to keep in mind, language is, at times can be flux, and words can be used different ways to mean different things. Like, um, if you were to say to someone who's a native Arabic speaker, to take a U-turn, they're going to be very confused because there's no U in Arabic. You know, as they get accustomed to, to America, they start to understand what a U-turn is. But there are colloquialisms. There are those things that we have. Just like, you know, I mean, Sarah from Nasser, if you remember all the way back to that first class that we did, you know, what Nasser did was in 1936. Language is different today than it was in 1936. Even um, there are like these little things that you can notice. Um, for example, it, Father John mentioned the Treparian of the cross. So is the word barbarian, is the word evil, is the word, you know, because in Arabic, there are some people that will say barbar, and there are some people that will say sharia. And, mm -hmm. and what do you do with that? Because even in the Middle East, you might have multiple different ways, which again, it's a translation of a translation. But what do you do when the um, translation starts to change. Is it um, to thee the champion leader, I thy servant, or is it I thy city? Because in both Greek and in Arabic, it started as city and now has been shifted to servant because we're not worried about the city in the same way we used to be. So we need to understand and, and allow for the fact that language would shift and, and might might change you know what did they use lord when they translated it into english and i don't know this because it even though it says master the idea behind master is is some sort of understanding what simeon was saying differently it's all hucky like at the end of the day we just are trying to to figure out how we're praising god in the best way possible and you know i personally i take sometimes a stand of there are so few um, hymns that the entirety of orthodoxy says the same way um, that to necessarily change them just to be more accurate. Um, sometimes something gets lost in our ability to, to pray with others. Um, anyway, I don't know if that helps answer or is too much of a tangent, but just some some thoughts no, I mean, that I have you know, on language think, as well. No, 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 Chris. I, I think uh, Chris uh, Paulo, like it's a, it's a great question, though, guys. So, I mean, I love these kind of questions. At least you know, uh, Greg and I, and and but that's why you know we 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 we, well, we just need to be um, like very objective about these things. You know, people sometimes like I'll tell you honestly, you know. Uh, when Sayyidina Joseph became the Metropolitan, one of the first things that he changed that he never liked from before, it was like, God is the Lord. Um, 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 who has shown uh, us light. You know, who has shown us the light. And it's actually, it's not, and you know, it's just not the original. It is actually God, you know, God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us or hath revealed himself to us. And, you know, and then, you know, it, it happened around April after Pascha that, you know, when they came out with the, Sayyidina said, you know, he wants the new translation. Um, and then we literally received an email, the Sacred Music Department, because we had to produce new music because it's new text. And literally somebody says, like, literally, I'm not, like, exaggerating. He says that we ruined his Pascha, his Paschal season, because we changed those words that he's known for so many years. And I'm like, you know, God bless you. I'm like, but, I mean, is that really, really like your Pascha is ruined just because, you know, actually we try to be a little bit more uh, uh, um, faithful to the translation or like to the right text, you know? 
Um, but sometimes then sometimes people take it very um, you know uh, uh, to the extreme, and that's that's when it becomes like no, this is like it shouldn't be this way. Um, and I know Sherry just answered master can have negative connotations, especially in the south. And I understand this. You know, we've heard that argument before here in the states, like because of slavery and because of this. Uh, and I totally understand that. I don't want to like sound now like you know going to like this debate or like uh, some any disrespect when by no means whatsoever. But uh, don't forget this word. You know, in in um, in Arabic, actually every time we use the word servant, we don't say the word servant. What we use in English, we say abid. Abid in Abid. Arabic means slave. We call ourselves, we are slaves of Christ, you know. Abd, you know, maybe somebody will hear, somebody knows like Abdullah, Abdullah. Well, slave of God literally means. And believe me, for 500 years under the Ottoman Empire, uh, you know, we were all, like at least our ancestors, we were, we, they were all, you know, Abid, you know, like in a way, they were not even third uh, uh, they were not even, they were objects. They were actually not worth objects, you know, if you were a Christian during the Ottoman Empire for 500 years, you know. Um, and I understand, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, um, you, know, uh, uh, you, you know, master, that's why they chose Lord, not master. But I hope it's not like, you know, in the church, we are in the end of the day uh, slaves of Christ, if I can say, you know, of, like servants, but also, you know, um, anyway, but that's how you just wanted, again, I'm not trying to, you know, I hope yeah. it's not like, nowadays it's like very easy to like, oh, he's against this, or he doesn't believe in this, or he doesn't, you know, no, but it's like we've heard this, because we've had uh, actually clergy, and I'm totally being very honest with you, we've had clergy actually contacting the Archdiocese to change the word master, take it out from liturgical services, like master bless, when the deacon called tells them the, the bishop, master blessed to stop the liturgy, or, you know. And it's like, well, it's a little bit too much now. We're taking it out of context. It's not like, you yeah. know, you know. So, anyway. And, and the key is always, like, keeping in mind that there are definitely sensitivities that probably existed differently in the 30s when these things were translated. So, stuff might be changing, and, and we're always developing. As, and, and as Father John said earlier, like the one thing that you, that we, he and I both are really trying to impart through everything is like, let's not, the whole point of these classes so that we understand where things are coming from, but not so that we get so tied to history. Like, I mean, I grew up in the Antiochian Archdiocese in North America. I've spent 38 years reading the Psalms at, Orthros a very certain way, or the psalm at the beginning, uh, you know, the way that it, it was in the red service book. So when we started changing those psalms, like, I had a hard time with it. Literally, like, spent so much time reading the psalms one way, and different words were tripping me up, and, and it frustrated me. But as time goes on and we get more used to things, we're able to adapt. Human beings are, are um, inherently adaptable. So let's not lose sight of the fact that, you know, uh, where it's coming from, we're not sure. Um, but don't be surprised if, if, you know, when things do change that maybe sometimes there's, there's a need for things to change. I don't know if that makes sense as a summary of that before we move on. Hanna, you, uh, you know, there's one, uh, um, you know, uh, possibility. St. Simeon said, Rabboni, to the master, which is Lord, which is translated to Greek by despotop, maybe, I mean, um, anyway, we shall continue. We shall continue. So following these um, prayers and the what we call the, the ekphonesis of the priest, the, the final part. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. For thine is the kingdom. We have the dismissal hymns, the apolitikion. Literally, this term means dismissal hymn. Um, it's a troparia and a theotokia or some combination coming from a combination of those same books, Octoikos, Menaean, Triodian, and Pentecostarian. For this coming Sunday, since it's, you know, such a simple um, week, everything is coming from the Octoikos in tone eight. 
So we see the resurrectional Politikian and the resurrectional Theotokian. Um, some weeks you might see something else interspersed, you might see, and again, it's the, the um, Tipicon that, that kind of puts everything together and shows us what everything is and, and how we put all these services together in combination. Yeah. And um, just one thing, um, anyway, the Apolitikion or the dismissal hymn, usually it's the, or not usually, um, it's by reading it, you kind of get the important uh, um, or the the idea about whatever feast or what you're celebrating, okay? So when you read, you know, um, save, O Lord, your people and bless your inheritance, grant, people, grant your, you know, kings, hierarchs, your church, victory over the adversaries and by the power of thy cross, preserving thy commonwealth. So you know it's about the cross. Uh, thy nativity or Theotokos has brought, you know, joy to the whole world. You know, so basically, the apolitico and the dismissal hymn is one to, uh, it will be the, oh, would be a good word, Greg, uh, the summary. summary, the summary of, um, you know, the defeat. So by reading those two, three lines, or four lines, usually not more than that, I mean, depends. Uh, anyway, but reading this one paragraph, you kind of get the idea and the summary about what, you know, the feast, uh, you know, you're celebrating, which feast you're celebrating. Keeping in mind, like this is this is why it's so important how we are presenting these things. The major teaching of the church, you know, happens through the hymnography of the church. It's not that these things are just nice songs that we come together to sing. Um, they're hymns that were written to teach us and to shed light on on something, you know, to shed light on. Um, what is happening in the in the church? What the church is is trying to impart to us? How the church is teaching us to live our lives? Um, you know, you'll often see in in hymns for major feast days, it always uses the term today, because these teaching hymns, these hymns, these um, sacred texts are there to bring us into the reality that is the feast, and to bring the feast, uh, make the feast present in our lives in this moment, in as things are happening. It's not that when we talk about save, O oh Lord, your people and bless your inheritance, that we remember that the cross happened 2000 years ago. It's save your people today. Um, and, and and please just come to us um, and, and help us out now because it's as important as it was when the cross came. Uh, Jesse, we'll save your question for the end to the difference between simple and daily Vespers, unless you want to tackle that now, Obuna. No, you can tackle it. No, it's fun, though. But we can wait until well, after, the, after the dismissal, maybe. Uh, after, just after you do the dismissal. So following the Apolitikion, or the dismissal hymn, we hear the dismissal which begins with the deacon saying wisdom and this dialogue. Um, and then we're taught through the dismissal itself, all of these important things that are going on, all of these things that are happening. On Saturday um, night in anticipation for Sunday, it's always may he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God. We always ask for the intercessions of his holy mother the might of the precious and life-giving cross, protection of the bodiless powers, honorable, glorious prophet, forerunner, Baptist John, all the apostles of anybody and everyone, the martyrs, God-bearing fathers, patron of the community. And then Joachim and Anna are always the last ones right before we get into this section here, which are all of the various saints that we celebrate in that day. Um... And I'm going to clear all of those drawings so that I can make that one clearer. And in here, we hear all of those saints that are commemorated um, in that day. It is, it is um, just a kind of a summary for us. Like the dismissal is basically a way to say, recap what just went on, what we were commemorating, and what, what was being highlighted. During Daily Vespers, you'll see this beginning section um, 
happening much shorter. You know, this stuff only deals with the people who are uh, being commemorated during those daily commemorations that we talked about uh, in that first week. And then at the end, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, because we need all the help we can get, Christ, have mercy on us. Amen. Anything to add to the dismissal? No, that's, I mean, I mean, there's the, the, also the part of we, we uh, uh, some people insist that they want to sing, preserve, oh God, the Holy Orthodox faith. Actually, here's a mistake. At some point, it will be uh, 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 fixed. Uh-huh. See this word, and all Orthodox Christians? It's not. It's actually the Holy Orthodox faith of all Orthodox Christians. But somehow, somebody put an end and became an end. You know, it's like, okay, fine. You know, the Holy Orthodox faith and Orthodox Christians. But it's actually preserve the holy orthodox faith of all orthodox christians um uh some people might think well is it chant these things uh, should be chanted or uh, uh, um, uh or uh, should be uh, read or intoned in the byzantine tradition a lot of times you see some uh, you'll uh, one person will just read them or it will um it will be just like uh, the choir just reading it so Amen. Preserve, O oh God, the Holy Orthodox faith and all of us Christians of the ages of ages. Amen. The priest goes, Most Holy Theotokos, save us. The choir answers just by reading it. More honorable than the cherubim, more glorious than the, you know, beyond compared than the seraphim, yada, yada, yada. Of course, in the Russian tradition, they sing them and, you know, which is, you know, fine. Uh, I just want to also want to answer. I answered this privately to Mark, but um, he asked, uh, you know, as Greg says, the hymns are proclaiming what is happening today. But I have noticed that the troparium for the transfiguration is in the past. When, O oh Christ our God? And uh, I actually answered him, that's the main reason why, you know, some, some of the translations needs to be updated, because it just doesn't say when, you know. Somebody, you know, when they translated to the English in our, you know, our diocese, we're like, oh, let's put when. But this is like major. This is a major mistake in a way, because exactly like, you know, we, you know, like Greg uh, explained, today is hung on the tree, you know. Today is the day of resurrection, you know. Today Christ is born. So we live these things again. It's just not a memory, you know. Um, uh, so um, that's why, Mark, we need to, uh, uh, you know, these things need to be looked at, looked at. And people need to have, like, a, uh, an objective view, you know, or objective, uh, 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 you know, acceptance, if I can just say this, you know. They just accept these things, you know, for, to make it better, you know, to make it, to, uh, um, you know, to make it not like theologically, you know, wrong in a way. Yeah. And Hanna actually just, yeah, it, it, the Arabic comes, uh, but actually even in, in the Arabic, we have the mistakes, you know, these things, you know. Any time well, you're in translation. Well, well, you can actually even, I mean, um, you can, uh, again, uh, an Arabic can be also understood when, as of like, it happened before or not, or it's happening now. But that's the problem when you translate from the English, I mean, from the Arabic to the English, which is a translation of a translation. And anyway. So to answer your question, I think the only other question that we haven't answered is the one about the simple Vespers. Uh, from Jesse. Basically, in some uh, versions of the Menaean, you might see it listed as simple Vespers or small Vespers. Small Vespers, Um, okay. okay. Small Vespers. It's it's for major feasts of the church, um, there are two Vesper service. There is the service that is called small Vespers, which is then followed by the service that is great Vespers. Um, So you just might see in a Menaean or two, like, Um, especially for a feast like the Feast of the Cross. At small Vespers, sing all of this. At great Vespers, sing all of this. It's basically, you know, reality is when you're living in a monastery, there's not a whole lot going on other than church services, which is a beautiful thing. And and they sometimes add a bunch of church services and and put a lot of different things together as, um, and this is really like kind of an off-color way to say all of that, but it's just, it's a beautiful thing that they're doing and, and, and a beautiful life that they're living. Um, Vespers coming from the monastic practice kind of adds, adds a whole lot of that stuff into there. Anything you want to add or correct to that, Avona? No, I mean, 
that's so beautiful. Sometimes I've, I'm, I'm not very familiar with um, simple vespers. Actually, we've never, I mean, the, or the uh, small vespers. Usually it's not done unless, in, like in monasteries. I've actually, I've never been to a, a small vespers. Uh, but I've heard sometimes they do it in some vigils. Um, like, um, uh, I mean, not, maybe I shouldn't talk more about it because I don't have a lot of, um, uh, um, I don't have a lot of information about the uh, uh, small vespers. Uh, that will be something very you know, interesting to look at, uh, look into. Where do you find the text or order for small vespers? Um, I don't know about the order. Where do you find it? Actually, I've never been familiar to see where to get it. I, uh, I don't know if they're just that's uh, something like monastic, but it will be good to look at the Tipikon, maybe uh, uh, His Grace Bishop Dimitri's Tipikon. I will look into the Arabic and see if I can find more um, uh, you know, order for the, its order, but for the text, it's in the Mineo, definitely. If, like if you're, uh, if you have Chris, you know, you have the um, um, HTM Holy Transfiguration Monasteries uh, uh, um, Mineon. Every time you see a major feast, look into some major feast for saints or uh, you know feast. Um, you will see. It will say right away in the beginning, small vespers. Here are the few hymns that you sing, and then it will say great vespers. You know, after what I've cried and all of these things. And um, I can't remember, Chris, if it's in the um, uh, Orologian that HTM put out or if it's not. Um, but I, I believe that um, it's definitely something that exists out there that, that we could find. Um, I'm going to, there's a question from Steve that asked, I have heard the priest's part at the end saying through the prayers of our Holy mm. Fathers and Mothers, Lord mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and say us. Um, mm. Not to disparage anyone that is saying that, but yes, it's incorrect. <laughs> the prayer of our Holy Fathers is referring to specifically um, the priest that is serving and it's a, as my understanding, especially um, kind of like a, a, a humility, a sign of their humility that they're saying through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, not just through the prayers of, of them specifically, which is why uh, when the bishop is there, it is, he says through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, and then the priest responds through the prayers of our Holy Master. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, as a sign of respect that it is by their prayers that that we are being saved, not as something that is, you know, needing to be gender inclusive and all of this stuff. Um, this, you know, because um, as a friend used to um, say very tongue in cheek, what would the equivalent be then when the bishop is there? Um, through our prayers of our holy masters, like what, you know, we don't, it's through the prayer of our Holy Fathers. You know, it's, yeah, you know, it's through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, not because we're ignoring the monastic tradition of, of our mothers in Christ, but because we are specifically in that moment, um, through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, it is, it is the actions of our uh, uh, priests. And probably in our... Um, Probably in in the monastic practice, it is it's coming from there. This through the prayers of our holy fathers, the brotherhood, the idea that that it's all together. But I doubt that that's really where it would, because then it would have uh, the equivalent for a female monastery. So it's specific mm -hmm. to the priests that are serving to the the, the ones serving that uh, the divine services. If that I mean, answers. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know. Uh, and I think Maya said before, a lot of times we, we try to, now in the liturgy, we have to make sure it's political correctness as if like somehow in the church, you know, we're with against something, you know. Um, some priests like to do, you know, fathers and mothers. So, I mean, some I actually have heard it through the prayers of our holy community. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, you know, one professor at the seminary used to, you know, say this, and maybe he's still, I don't know. But the point is, I mean, it's just, that's not what it says, you know, and it's not like was some, you know, somehow, you know, it was intended just to somehow 
glorify men against women or anything like that. So it just it happened that the clergy, you know, men. That anyway, without going through a lot of you know, um, but uh, it's not like some people just want to be more politically correct or they feel like they have. If they don't say this, somehow the church is mistreating or uh, against you know women or any other you know. Um, any other thing. Anyway, what else do we have? Um, can you comment on plans for new Vespers music coming out? I have seen the Immunological of Christ. What may be next? Um, Jesse, what we're trying to do with whatever time we have, and um, we did the Lord of Christ, the, the fast ones. I still have to have them in Byzantine. We have them in Western, but we still need to write them in Byzantine. Um, other stuff, we're just like trying to focus uh, whenever we can, on the major uh, voxa, uh, the glories of major feasts. Um, uh, at some point, we'll probably have to revisit Alkazan's project, you know, Vesper's uh, uh, project. But the problem, you know, it's just uh, none of us do, do this as a full time, you know. But uh, something like, you know, at least the glories of the major feasts for Vespers that to be done, you know, done right. Um, and done to the best of our ability. Awesome. Hmm. Uh, Are there any we talk about uh, small vespers? I mean, uh, daily vespers. No, Lenten. I don't know. Do you want to? I mean, I can. Um, well, let me uh, pull the, this. Let me see. Just look here. I have a actually. Hmm. So like we looked at at the um, in the section of the augmented litany and all of that, when we do celebrate daily vespers, um, basically the the major differences are um, following the evening prokimenon, we would then go into vouchsafe O Lord, followed by the litany of supplication, followed by the peace and the prayer at the bowing of heads, followed by the apostica, Saint Simeon's prayer. Um, the Trisagian prayer, we would sing the Troparia, the, uh, the Apolitikia, and then we would sing the Augmented Litany, and then we would have the dismissal. So basically, can that's we, the major difference. You know, uh, yes, but I, I can actually, you know, we still have, I mean, we don't have to, like, we have to go till 10, but uh, yeah. uh, we can use a couple more minutes. I, if, uh, can I share my screen? Uh, Should be able to. Yeah. There you go. Here we go. Um, so let me just, I will read this. I don't know if you can all see this. Uh, probably this, um, I did this at the SMI a couple of years ago. Uh, I shared this um, file and probably we can just post it. Um, in daily vespers, note the following differences in order that we usually have uh, uh, different than the great vespers. O oh Lord, I have cried unto thee and its verses usually are chanted in the immunologic style, the fast style. Actually, the one just Jesse asked about. Uh, instead of like, O oh Lord, I have cried out unto thee, instead of this kind of like slower version, um, in uh, daily vespers, O oh Lord, I have cried out unto thee, hear thou me, hear thou me, O oh Lord. The beat is like, but more faster. Um, then, six hymns are chanted after the Lord have cried in its verses, either three hymns from the Octoricos or three from the Mineon, or three hymns repeated from the Mineon. What does that mean? So on a, on a great Vesper service, you actually have, if you see now my second, and you know, thank God, although it's raining outside, I don't want to jinx it, but, um, you know, at least my uh, um, hotspot is working great. On a great Vespers on Saturday, see how you have uh, 10, um, you have 10 verses, 10 hymns to chant. On a daily Vespers, you, it's called for only six, Okay. That's one uh, definitely a major difference. And then we go back. Uh, the hymn of uh, O Gladsome Light is read, usually not chanted. The litany of fervent supplication is moved in between the apolitica and the dismissal. Okay? Omitting the petitions, let us say, with our whole soul and O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, and starting with, have mercy upon us, O God. O God. What does that mean? Let's go back to the service. You know, it's nice to, like, read about it, but, like, let's look at it. So, see, this is the, the litany that we're talking about. 
and this one in the daily vespers is moved. And where is it, uh, of course, with this, where is it? So at the daily vespers, you say the prokimenon, let's say Thursday prokimenon or the night, like Tuesday prokimenon. Yeah. And then really when you finish the prokimenon, you right away goes, you go to the vote safe O Lord. Yeah. And then you still do the litany of supplication in its place. But the one I just mentioned, the litany of fervent supplication, you're actually going to move it to where? Right here, before the dismissal. Okay? You just like copy paste it down there. Yeah. And the, okay? And the the prayer of, prayer of, what is it? The prayer of St. Simeon, the, uh, you know, Lord now, you know, is read by the elder. Okay, you know, we've talked about this. Uh, in general, our responses uh, should not be embellished, but chanted quickly. Um, but the Lent, uh, I mean, this is the daily Vespers. This is the difference between the daily Vespers, if you're doing Vespers on Monday, Tuesday, or any time there's, it's not called for an entrance. Actually, somebody uh, mentioned that, you know, like Vespers, daily Vespers and the great Vespers. And it's like a Vespers with entrance, a Vespers without entrance. And usually whenever it's with entrance, um, it's festal one, it's a great vesper. But this is the, the, the difference between um, the daily vespers and the great vespers that, as we know them now. Um, uh, I can talk, I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, I, didn't, I can't see, I think now the questions were. Not yet. Okay. okay. Um, for Lenten vespers, um, and when we say Lenten, usually, I mean, of course, during Lent, and um, when there is no major feast, like the Feast of the Annunciation always falls, at least with the new calendar, it always falls during Lent, you know. Uh, we do not apply this, you know, this uh, order that I'm going to go through now. Uh, we usually apply, um, uh, I mean, Lent and Vespers is for any, either during Lent, but there's no major feast like Annunci Annunciation, like the uh, Holy Forty Martyrs, Holy Martyrs. Like, uh, 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 Saint Haralambos, you know. Uh, anyway, in Lent and Vespers, the only difference is uh, you still have the same concept as the daily Vespers, six hymns after Lord have cried, but you always have the two Old Testament readings, and usually, like I said, Genesis and Proverbs. And you know how we said, anyway, after the Prokimenon. Technically, in a regular, you know, great vespers or outside of land, we always had most likely, re, uh, you know, uh, Old Testament readings. It just somehow, like Greg said, in land we like to say things more fully. You know, so the two Old Testament readings are uh, um, uh, definitely there. And then with the aposticha, we have something a uh, little bit different than the regular uh, aposticha. Actually, I forgot to mention here that actually it's missing. For the daily vespers, instead of four hymns for the apostica, you have three hymns in the apostica. Actually, I just, it just came to my mind. So, like, I would go like this here, and to go like this, and then add something like for the apostica, only three hymns are chanted. Okay? I will uh, adjust it and maybe, you know, I'll format it better, and then uh, we can add it. But uh, going back to the Lenten Vespers, the Aposticha, actually we have two hymns, okay? First hymn is chanted twice in the Stichiratic style, and the second hymn for the Martyrs is chanted once in the Ermologic style. So there are two hymns, but you're repeating the first one twice. That's why it makes a total of three hymns that you're singing. They conclude with a Theotokion chanted in the emologic style. Usually, uh, all three hymns are chanted in the same tone with the appropriate verses. There are verses specifically for Lent uh, that we, we use for Lent, uh, and there are actually verses that we use for the Apostica uh, for daily vespers. Okay? Um, instead of the Apolitikia, the resurrection of Apolitikia like we had, um, like in our case here, instead of those, during Lenten Vespers, we do not sing these hymns. 
we sing. The Lenten Troparia, Rejoice, O Virgin Theotokos, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And then the next one, O Baptizer of Christ, Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, O pure apostles and all the saints, both now and ever, we have taken refuge, you know, the uh, Theotokos. Actually, four hymns are chanted. And then, Lord have mercy 12 times, um, glory both now, more honorable, and then there's the sent affirm prayer, and then the dismissal, the way we have, okay? Um, again, I would always say, look, I mean, people who are interested to learn more about these things, I think the best way, and that's how I actually I learned, and I, at least for me, I found it the best way. Um, I would look at these, especially now we have such a great tool, the online liturgical guide, print one like Lento one, and then print one um, uh, from a great Vespers one, but from a Saturday, and note the differences in between and see what changed and what stayed the same and stuff like this. And that's how at least you can, you know, um, uh, um, you know, um, you get to see the difference between these things. Um, oh, okay. Uh, anyway, anything else we need to talk about Vespers? Anybody has any questions? I mean, there is something we did not talk about. I just, you know, we kind of said, like, we probably should open the whole uh, um, uh, can of worms. Is that the English saying? Um, can of worms, yep. But, yeah. Um, but... Uh, of the Artoclasia, that's the five loaves, uh, the service of the five loaves, and the fervent prayer, the liti. Uh, but this is usually it's a service uh, or a part that is added to Vespers um, only on major, major feasts. And if you rem remember how Greg said last week, when somebody, I think Hanna asked about the Anaxandaria, when we talked about, uh, Greg talked about the lasagna, how it was his favorite thing. And if he eats lasagna every day, then it won't become his favorite thing because it's only for special time, for special, you know. Um, so the artoclasia or the five loaves, the service of the five loaves um, is basically for major feasts or the patron saint of the church or a major feast like St. Peter and Paul, St. John Chrysostom, you know. It's excellent. Yeah. Um, um, oh, is that? Um, but what, if any, is the correct practice of lighting the lamps at a glass of light? I think we've talked about it this last week. I mean, people like are very adamant about like we need to push the button. You know, we need to put the lights on right when a glass of light. Um, this, it's never like um, uh, local tradition. Maybe in the, uh, I don't know if it's like uh, you know written somewhere that we have to be. I'm not familiar with it. But uh, it's not about like there is definitely you have to do the light, you know. It's a nice tradition, I would say. When I got to St. Vlad's and I went to my first uh, vigil service during the Great Vespers portion, I thought it was like a light show because they have all these different rubrics. And this is not to criticize. It's um, it was eye opening for me because I was only used to one way. But they. Um, turn the lights on at specific times and turn them off and back on and back off and all this off and on. I, uh, I, you know, it, it's, it's whatever your local customs are always in, in consultation with your priest, every, uh, those things are not like the big traditions that we have to follow. That's not like you're changing how many stakira you're going to sing during Lord I have cried. Like let's, we, we don't get too, too bogged down. Um, with these kinds of, of um, little practices. There's not like a, oh, they lit that candle first and then that one second. So that was incorrect. You know, it's practice of the parish. Anything to add, Abuna? Uh, no. Um, oh, Sensatla. Oh, well, there's one question from Gerald. The reason I asked about uh, with an entrance is because we had a great Vespers last Wednesday, I believe, with eight Sikhira at the Lord of Pride. Actually, that should, you know, I'm not familiar why St. Tecla then gets eight. I thought either St. Nicholas or St. John the Baptist that they get eight um, instead of, you know, ten like on Saturday or major Feast of Christ. 
sometimes you'll see six or four or um, I need to check this I need to check um, same tackle actually I can we can all look at it uh, in a second now you have okay actually um, actually I will share my screen in one second let me just uh, look it up um, let it out I mean um, uh, have the document uh, out and then uh, uh, September So if you look at the link that Gerald just shared, you'll see um, that there are four for St. Thecla, none of them mm -hmm. repeated. And then there are four for St. Silouan, but one of them is repeated, which, I mean, obviously, as you're pulling up the, the Menaean text in general, Abuna, um, we'll have a better answer. But I think part of it is, St. Silouan, you know, has his three hymns, but because St. Thecla has, has special veneration within the Antiochian uh, Patriarchate, um, you know, sometimes they have, um, maybe she had six for set, okay, so she and has, Chris Holloway says what, there's six. She gets, she gets six, so here, if, um, there's the Zoom share screen. Uh, you're looking at technically the the book of the Mineon. It says, "See how in Vespers." Oh, I have to just can't see. Um, it says, "For Lord, I have cried. We allow for six verses if you're celebrating just Saint Tecla, and uh, chant the following stichera, repeating the first two. That's why they're like four hymns: one, two, three, and four. But if you mm -hmm. see here, it says twice." And it says twice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so putting it together with San Silwan, I'm sure somebody, it's just like putting two services together and somehow they came out like, let's do eight, eight. four, and four. Um, and you would so never see an odd number is the, the, the other thing. So like Thecla, just be, because she has four, you repeat the first two so that we get to that number of six. Because, uh, you know, I often joke like that the Typicon has um, has a hard time with things, almost like the Typicon is a human being that has emotions and, and needs things done a certain way. That, but it's true, you know, like if you look at a service and you see that there are only seven because we're doing four for St. Thecla and three for St. Siloan, like it just makes you uncomfortable. But rather than, than taking away from St. Siloan and only doing four for St. Thecla and two for St. Silouan, so you get to that magic number of six. Sometimes you can, you'll, you'll see eight, um, eight Stakira, well, here, very rarely. Here's, here's what we basically have um, usually done when they were not mixing feasts like St. Thecla and St. Silouan. Um, yeah. On Saturday night, starting with the last verse of Psalm 141, bring my soul out of prison, 10 hymns in total are chanted. Six hymns about Christ's resurrection and three hymns from the Mineon, repeating the first one. So six plus three, repeated the first one, that's ten. Nativity of St. John the Baptist, June 24th, seven hymns, repeating the first one. So it would become, you know, uh, um, you know eight hymns in total. Um, St. Nicholas, December 6th, which I should enter, you know, I should actually this should be also here. See, thank you for it, you know, because now I'm actually <laughs> editing what, you know. Here we go. St. Nicholas, eight hymns. Other major feasts, six hymns. Three hymns repeated or four hymns repeating the first two, depending on, you know, how they have. Pentecost actually has ten hymns. Eight hymns repeating the first one and the fourth one. Don't ask me why the fourth one, not the second or the third or, you know, the eighth one or something, you know. But that's basically what we have that we usually follow. But again, because we've, you know, for St. Takla and St. Siloan, uh, um, uh, you know, they're just like putting two, two services together. Whoever, I mean, 
superior, or I don't know if he relied on the patriarchate. Our patriarchate, typical, they just um, uh, you know called for a just somehow mix in two, and of course they have the right to do so if the patriarch that's what the patriarch wants, or if that's what the metropolitan wants, we follow. Uh, where we can get it, everybody every time ask me about, you know, we just, it, it's not for sale, you know, it's not a PDF, you know, it's just, uh, and it's just, you know, but we use it just because we use it, you know, we have, some of us have it just because we do the work, a lot of work with them. We appreciate that they give us all the copyright, uh, you know, to um, post their, you know, their text online as long as we don't tell them or, you know, claim that they're ours, so. Anyway, that's, yeah, I, I, I like it, Jesse, with the smiley face. Anyway, anything else that we, we need to add? I think we got everything. Thank you all so much. Uh, Chris, Marina, any uh, commercials that you guys need to jump in with? Commercial. Uh, well, first of all, I want to apologize for being so late. I got trapped in another meeting, and I just couldn't get out and... So I apologize, but thank you all for we'll being forgive. here. Thank we'll you. Forgive. Thank you. Um, I know Chris has some things that he wants to talk about, but I'll jump in real quick, seeing that I, I while I have the floor, um, we're getting ready to to mail uh, email everybody that um, has been uh, that was in the Sacred Music Institute, the virtual Sacred Music Institute that was on our books. Um, we're going to be sending out all the new information about doing our virtual choir and it's going to take us a little while to get it together and it's a christmas ex apostolarian so we want everybody to open that email and participate it's going to be so much fun and if you've never done it before it's a little weird but in the end we're going to have a wonderful um thing to remember our our virtual sacred music institute and father john and greg i need you guys to do it as well you need to be our our leaders so that everybody doesn't feel worried about it i know you can do it and we're going to give you learning, we're giving you learning tracks the whole bit it's going to be great so sure. i'll let i'll let chris take it over from here but thank you all for coming tonight we sure appreciate it Thank you, Marina. Thanks, Marina. Uh, just to piggyback on what Marina just said, uh, the, the ex apostolarian for the Nativity is actually in the Tone 3 um, traditional prosomia melody, only it's a harmonized melody. And if you listen to it, it actually follows pretty close to, to the, the traditional Byzantine melody. So um, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, so those of you who maybe are, you know, more chant oriented and don't do four part music, um, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity because it is a melody that you know. So uh, it'd be great to have everybody participate. Uh, I do want to give my regular commercials as far as what we have coming up in the upcoming weeks. Um, next week, we'll be, we'll be doing a session with Charlie Marge on tone one. The following weekend after that is the those, the Sunday of tone one. Uh, so Charlie's going to present, and actually this is um, basically what he did at the Virtual Sacred Music Institute back in July, um, but he'll be doing a live portion of it as well so that uh, people can uh, ask questions. He can, you know, have a, more of a discussion going. He'll do like starting and stopping from the session uh, from this summer but it should be a pretty interesting session. Um, the week after that, which I believe I want to say is the 13th or 14th, something like that, uh, that Tuesday night, uh, we'll have the next in the series of what to sing and chant while singing and chanting, where we'll start on Orthros, uh, which again will be two weeks, uh, two weeks apart. So uh, we do, as, as we've been trying to do all, all fall long, um, have several sessions, you know, weekly sessions coming up, uh, and hopefully there'll be something there for everybody. So if you haven't signed up for all of those, make sure you do that. If you have not signed up for the, say, uh, the, our, uh, our Facebook group, I will put in the chat a, uh, 
a link to where you can go to sign up for that fa that Facebook group. I uh, just request to be a member and we'll, we'll accept you and you should all be able to get in. Um, everyone who is in this session has been added to our email list so that you should be getting week weekly emails uh, about the, these sessions. There's links to sessions that you might have missed or the sessions you'd like to, to, to hear again, um, as well as information about the upcoming sessions as well. So we've got a ton of stuff going on here with the department. Um, we could not thank you guys enough. We really appreciate the fact that so many people are taking part in these programs. Um, it's a great testament to, number one, your commitment to your church. Uh, but not only that, it's also a great testament to the fact that right now, so many of us have very little ability to participate. And, and that's really difficult. Um, you guys are taking that opportunity to, you know, to build on your, your experience, your knowledge, your, your technical skill, all those things, um, which is great. Share these sessions with other people in your church. Just because somebody has not in the past participated in sacred music department stuff, that doesn't mean that they should not be here learning all of this information. Yes, you go, go out and teach them from what you've learned, but you could also just bring them right here. And so uh, they can be a part of this as well. So please share those emails when you get them um, and tell your friends and, and get them involved as well. Um, again, thank you all for being here. Thank you to our presenters, uh, Greg and Father John. Um, as always, fantastic. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you all. Night. Have a good night. Very nice. Good night. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. Harold, I saw your comment.